Hello and welcome to this recorded message from St Luke's in Greyshot. We're on the Hampshire-Surrey border and uh, if you don't know me my name is Jeremy Haswell and I'm the vicar of Greyshot and we welcome you very much uh, during this time of coronavirus, uh, the fear that's going around in our communities and also the uh, desire to conform and comply with the government instructions both of staying at home, social distancing, and also for some of us, self-isolating. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, obviously, we're now locked out of the church and we're unable to do anything in there. And so during the course of this little program, we're going to use some stock images of St. Luke's on the inside. So um, that's what they are, pictures that will remind some of you who know St Luke's and love St Luke's uh, of our home base and the building. We're going to start with a collect from this, which is the fifth Sunday of Lent on the 29th of March. I'm going to read a collect from the Common Worship Lectionary and also from the Book of Common Prayer. So let's pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the BCP, Book of Common Prayer Collect. We beseech thee, almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, during this time, of course, we are thinking a lot about the different situations that people find themselves in. Some are together with families. Some are stuck on your own with not much press prospect of seeing many people. And then there are others who are working harder than they've ever worked. And we think, of course, of our heroic NHS staff, but also of those working in the supply chain, both uh, of the medical industry and also of the production and provision of food. And of course we're very grateful to all those who are working so hard. We have an invisible enemy. Uh, and of course it's very understandable that the invisible enemy, which is a virus, uh, should cause fear in our community fear in our hearts and that is a very strong force at work in a lot of people. During the course of this little service that we're putting together we're going to have a confession and an absolution and we're going to have a talk by Wes Sutton who is the head of the Acorn Foundation healing foundation and uh, so he's going to join us as somebody part of our community that worships with us periodically and also we're going to have some prayers prayers for the world and uh, so please do stick with us with us and enjoy what we're doing last week we thought about the opportunity that this time might uh, present us it's a time when we can reflect on the core of our faith. What is it that touched us at the beginning? And maybe some of you are listening to this and have never had an encounter with God in such a way that you have your own faith. And we pray that, that, will, that this service will inspire you that there is a God that we are talking to and that you could put your trust in him. It's also an opportunity for us to refocus our lives. Sometimes the, uh, 
the lens gets a bit mucky and uh, we get a bit out of focus in our lives and we get distracted by many things. This is an opportunity for us to stop and to think about focusing on the person, the life and the teachings of Jesus. It may be that some things come up and you sense that it's time for you to say sorry and you really desire change in an area of your life. And we call this repentance. We call this uh, turning away from that which we hate in ourselves and we ask God to help us and forgive us for the past. It's also a time for us to recommit ourselves in our personal discipleship and our walk with God. And uh, we pray that you might be able to do that. And one way we can do that is to focus on scripture, on reading the Bible. It may be that you've had no time to read the Bible. And I want to encourage you to do that during this time. We have some very useful apps which you can use. And one of them is B-I-O-Y, Bible in One Year. And that is a way in which you can read through the entire Bible in 365 days. And that's an amazing opportunity and it has, and it takes about 25 minutes maybe, and you can have it read on an audio uh, option that comes with the app. And then you can just listen to it if you're struggling with reading um, for whatever reason. And then there's also another app which I want to recommend, which is, B, um, which is uh, Lectio 365. And that is a nine minute or 10 minute meditation on scriptures uh, helping us to pray at this difficult time and we can receive comfort from that. We're now going to move to a time where Wes is going to send his message from his sitting room and from wherever he is at home, um, isolated and uh, distancing himself from other people. So over to you Wes, thank you. Good morning, it's lovely to be with you and though we're not together in body, we're certainly together in heart as we meet around the presence of Christ and around the Word of God. It's a privilege for me to bring the message to you this morning and I'm reading from Romans chapter 8 verses 5 to 11 and I'm reading from the NIV. Those who live according to the flesh have set their minds on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have set their minds on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. But those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Today is not necessarily about the coronavirus, but it is about us as disciples of Christ as we live through it and through days like these. The passage we've read centres around the essential question of what has formed us and what directs the core of our lives. In essence, what makes us who we are. For many as Christians, in truth, we look and act just like everyone else. We work and get paid, hopefully. We spend our money wisely, hopefully. We go on holiday, we do Christmas, we decorate our houses, we drive our kids to school and we shop. We give to charity, hopefully. We recycle our rubbish responsibly. We do not rob banks or cheat on our tax form. We try not to speed, at least when there's a police car around. We live and breathe, hopefully, 
just like everyone else. In the West, we are not persecuted for our faith in Christ. And most of the time, we're not even noted as disciples of Jesus. We have, if you like, perfected the art of blending in. We no longer stand out. It begs the question that was asked by the friend of a colleague of mine, who asked him, why should I become a Christian? You all live and look exactly as I do. The only difference is I get Sundays free. But this passage that Paul writes to the Roman church about is something else other than something that is skin deep, something that is surface about our faith. It points to a foundation element of who we are. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who is a French idealist a philosopher and a Jesuit priest, is quoted as saying that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And that sort of phrase kind of turns on its head everything about reality for us, about being created in the image of God. God made us in every respect just like him with one exception, that of deity. It's my friend uh, Winky Prattney, who happens to now be with the Lord, and he said that the message of the Bible is summed up in one very simple phrase, God is God and you are not. However, Paul is wanting the believers in Rome to understand this one important thing, and by extension, he would have us understand it too. The narrative itself begins a little earlier in the chapter to the verses that I've read, and you might want to just go back and take a look at them. Verse 2, he talks about a different law, a different principle, a different power behind living that has been given to us through Christ uh, by virtue of God becoming incarnate and changing by his life, death and resurrection the way that we could live. Verse 4, he talks about the righteous demands of another law that was in operation because we had, through our own choices, fallen away from God. And being led that way, we are led by our own desires and impulses and cravings and longings. And I'll be honest with you, most of the time those things don't do any of us any good. It's built around the philosophy of it feels right, if it pleases me, I want it, or I shall have it. Uh, I'm sorry, I've just been watching Lord of the Rings again, so if you get hints of Gollum, you'll understand why. But that same thing, it's mine, I want it, therefore I shall have it, I shall do it. But now he says that the righteous demands of this other principle are met in Christ and by Christ. And so we live in this new way, not the old self-focused flesh way. And Paul invites the Christians in Rome and us to live by an entirely different focus. He says that those who set their minds on the spirit live in that way. But those who set their minds on the flesh, that natural self disposition that leads us away from God, then those people live that way, often to their own loss and often to the hurt of others. He says that one of these principles, one of these ways of living will govern us. It'll govern uh, how we live. In fact, the word that Paul uses has the connotation of being joined to and taking on the characteristics of the thing that governs us. Someone or something is governing you for good or ill to either bless or to dominate you. One, he says, leads to life and peace with God, peace within ourselves and peace with others. The other leads to a dying to God, a dying to our true selves, who we were made to be, and a dying in relationship to others. And he ends in verse 8, stating quite clearly that those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot 
please God. Now, that's not because God is difficult to please. On the contrary, all through the Bible, which is the story of God's journey with us and our journey with him as humanity, God shows great joy, even at the smallest moments, when humanity responds in truth and in love to him. Now, in the story of the Bible, they don't always get it right. They don't always get it fully right. But God always fully responds with grace and love even as they take faltering steps towards him, just like us, even as we take our faltering steps towards God. Paul is saying it's not that God takes umbrage and is difficult to please, but the flesh, this natural self-centred us, does not actually have the ability to please God because we naturally do not want the things that God supernaturally has. And what we selfishly hold open in our own lives, God doesn't want anyhow. It's like apples and oranges. It just doesn't mix. Which brings me to the subject of carrot cake. Now, look, I'm sorry, but carrot cake is just not my thing. I have never been able to get my head around putting vegetables in my dessert. And, and for all of those who love it, please accept my apologies. Look, I have tried. I have been cajoled. I have even been tricked into eating carrot cake. It's not that I despise those who love it. I just don't like carrot cake. It is not for me. In the realm of carrot cake, it is impossible for carrot cake to please me. Now, lemon drizzle cake, that is a completely different cake stand. So how is it that we do this? We set our minds on the spirit and not on the flesh. How is it that we live by this principle, but not any other? Well, let me give you a few things that I've learned, mainly by missing them first time around, or to be honest, a few times around. The first is this, develop this disposition that you do not know anything until and unless God has spoken to you. It means that we do not jump to conclusions about people or situations. We do not respond or react out of our prejudices or our preferences. Just because we think it's so, it doesn't necessarily mean that God thinks it's so. The second is cultivate the habit of soaking your mind in the Bible. Look, just keep reading it. Don't always worry about understanding all of it. I've got to be honest, nobody does. We're all on a journey. But some things I've not begun to grasp or even understand until the fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth time of reading the text. And can I encourage you, read the whole Bible, not just your favourite bits. In Colossians 3.16, Paul writes to the church and he says, let the message of Christ dwell in you richly. So look, just keep reading it. If there are bits you don't understand, just move on, but keep reading it. Fill your mind with the message of Christ. The third thing is soak yourself in worship of whatever genre. So if it's Matt Redman or Handel's Messiah, if it's Hillsong or Taze, just live in a place of worship. It will permeate your spirit and it will develop a sensitivity in you to the voice of God. The fourth thing is commit yourself to the practice of silence, of waiting, of simply saying, God, I'm here whenever you're ready. Now, it will take some time before you may be aware that God is drawing near, but don't quit. Keep your mind in the Bible, keep your heart in worship and commit yourself to that place of the presence of God. And finally, live with the idea that you are 
deeply loved and deeply valued and deeply wanted by God, that he loves your being with him just as much as you love his presence with you. And finally, let me tell you about the fairy liquid bottle. There is a myth, of course, in clergy that, you know, you make your dog collar out of the uh, the plastic bottle of the fairy liquid bottle. And can I be honest, actually, in, at times it has been true. But I remember uh, for something else. I only ever did it once. And when I tell you the story, you'll understand why. If you take a reasonably full fairy liquid bottle and put it on the counter in your kitchen and with all the might that you can muster as a seven-year-old, squeeze it, it is entirely possible to hit the ceiling of the kitchen with green fairy liquid. Now, you understand why I only ever did it once in my lifetime. And my mother did make it plainly clear to me through the laying on of hands that this was not an acceptable use of the fairy liquid bottle. However, the thing, of course, it does teach us is this, that it is under pressure that what we really are comes out. What pressure does is it reveals what really is inside us. And I guess some of us have maybe been, been discovering this as we've been in self-isolation with another individual. But in this season, the answer is not to tough it out in the self-centred flesh. This self-life but to invite the Holy Spirit to be the focus within us and then for us to keep moving towards him. It has been great to be with you today and thank you for giving me your time. So let's just end with a little word of prayer. Father, I thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus that you not only reveal to us how to live, but you come by your spirit to make that possible. And so I ask for all of us here today Holy Spirit, come upon us and lead us and draw us after your own heart. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. And now we're going to use a Lent confession, which is based on Psalm 51. Psalm 51, one of the model prayers of repentance, if you want to look it up. So let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Now, of course, that may be something that you just want to get rid of in your life. And it may be a change that you want to have. Or it may be that there are deep-seated attitudes that you don't really even know about. And you just pray that God will come and help you to get free. So let's pray. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the absolution when Jesus said that we could be free. And so as I pray, I want you to receive into your heart the love of God that comes to forgive everyone who truly repents or turns away from the stuff that gets in the way of our relationship with him. So, receive. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me in that. And now we're going to have our prayers of intercession our prayers for the world. Thank you. Lord, we thank you that no matter what situation this world may be in, we know that you are ultimately in control. 
We pray today that you will intervene into this difficult time when people are fighting against the coronavirus. You know our bodies even better than any scientist or doctor and you have the power to heal. We thank you for the nice weather we have had and pray for weather like this to continue for our country that is currently on lockdown because we know the sun can make a huge difference to our mood. We pray for the world. Please, Lord, help all the people who are ill due to any problem. We pray for the poor and the people searching for safety from difficult circumstances. We ask that you protect them and send your angels to guide and comfort them. Lord, please help countries that cannot afford basic sanitary equipment. Give their leaders wisdom and please inspire other countries to help them. Father, you understand all the struggles we go through. Thank you that you sent your son to help, guide and die for us. In him, we have freedom and a relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for our wonderful NHS and all other key workers ploughing through, working hard to keep this country functioning. Empower them, Lord. Without them, life would be very hard. Please give them your peace and protection. We pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. We thank you for his leadership that he has shown throughout the last few weeks. Lord, please heal him. We pray for him to seek your help and have a revelation of your healing power. We pray for Prince Charles, that you would heal him. We pray that he too would seek your guidance in this time. We pray for our schools in the parish, for the children, some of whom won't understand what is happening and the parents who may be struggling with teaching them. Lord, please guide and comfort them. We ask that you give insight to families with small homes, of activities to do, and that you would spark conversations that would strengthen their faith in you and your plans for them. We pray for our young people some who aren't able to take their exams at present. We ask that this would be resolved without any negative repercussions. We pray for our elderly and vulnerable here in Greyshaw and around the world. We ask for your protection and peace in this uncertain time. Help us know how to best and safely help them. Let them know that you are with them. Lord, we know that you are a good God and love us. While the world is changing on a daily basis, we thank you for the gift of technology. It is so encouraging that small groups and the youth group have been able to virtually get together and grow closer to you through video calling. Thank you for the way that communities are coming together even though we are physically distancing. We ask that you'd use this time to help us rely on you more. Help us connect with our friends who don't know you and show them that there is hope in you. We thank you that you are not a distant God, but a God who chose to come to earth and to suffer. We know that you understand, and we pray for you to do a miracle in our village, country and world. In your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to finish now with uh, the words of the song, 
or the hymn, Abide With Me. This was suggested to me by a member of our congregation, Mary, who rediscovered this and thought that the words of this hymn were particularly appropriate for the time that we find ourselves in as a nation, even as the world. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, so oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power, who, like thyself, my guide and stay can be? Through cloud and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Hem's morning breaks, and us vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Now let us pray as we close the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God as our Father and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord and Saviour. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for seeing it through to the end. And go in peace 
to love and serve the Lord, whether it be in your home or whether it be on the phone or through social media. Love and be a blessing. God bless you. Bye bye.